me share my screen with you. If you guys are wondering why I'm constantly like doing this, it's because I have two computers, one where I'm presenting and then one like where I'm monitoring your comments and your screens and stuff. So like, that's why I'm constantly doing this. If you were curious, I mean, you probably don't care, but just letting you know. Welcome back to day nine. Happy Wednesday, hump day. We're reading September, guys. It's already September 2nd, and we have a big test coming up. We have an ACES, our first ACES. ACES is school-wide, um, so that means we'll be taking a, an ACES test in every almost every class. So for us, it'll be a comment, like covering the stuff that we've covered so far. So like metric measurements, lab safety, and whatever else we get to um, before that happens. But I just want to give you a heads up that you do have a big test coming up. I have no idea what it looks like right now because usually we take these in person. And this is our first time doing this test um, distance learning. So you're going to be right there with me learning what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. And I already started the announcements before I even got there. So this is what we have to do today. Announcements. I'm going to introduce your digital notebook. Um, we're going to do metric measurements. There's not going to be any catch up time. I know I always try to build in some time for you to work on assignments. Um, but today there's not going to be any time, at least if things go the way first period went, um, it took way longer than expected. So announcements, like I already said, we have a test coming up in just under two weeks, not next week, but the week after. Um, I will go over the content with you like the day before or the few minutes before you start the test, just like a, just a quick review, just in case. Um, I want to also remind you that you need to come to class on time. So thank you to those students who are either logging in a minute or two early or coming right at night at uh, 1030 and logging in right at the right time. But you do need to come in on time. I can't afford to continue to wait a few minutes for everybody. I don't like to repeat myself a thousand times. That's like one of my pet peeves. And if I go over everything and you show up like five minutes late and you're like, miss, what are we doing? That's it's like, come on. I understand sometimes things happen. You're running late for whatever reason, but do your best to try to get here on time. Um, if you did not see your emails yet or notice in Google Classroom, last night while I was up until the wee early hours of the morning, I posted some resources for you because now that we're going to start the metric uh, measurement notebook, we're going to start getting into some math. So science is heavily reliant on math. Math is a universal language. It transcends all language barriers. It is universal for a reason. Everybody knows what math is and we can communicate that way. So science is a math-based language. We are gonna be doing a lot of math is what I'm trying to tell you. So some of you are like, ah, I hate math and you probably hate math because you think you're not good at math or you had a bad math teacher somewhere in, in the history of your school career and they killed your love for math. Like math is important. It guides our lives. You have math is involved in money. You have to be able to pay your bills, whatever. Um, so what I did was in general resources, I posted a bunch of um, math help pages. So I have this book that like uh, is extra homework help specifically just for math. And I took the pages out of there that we are gonna be using the most. And I will add to this as we get further along, but these are like the things that we're gonna cover right now immediately within the next month. So if you're not good with fractions, you can go through and review this. Maybe it could be used like a cheat sheet um just to brush you up but fractions for some reason everybody is afraid of or they hate they're actually not bad uh, there's several pages on fractions including how to multiply and divide them how to add them etc all the properties and how to get around navigating fractions like it has a lot and then we are going to be doing some graphing so you have to know how to convert from decimal to percentage and back and then from fraction to these two so that's why it's like a triangular circle loop. I should say loop. It's a triangular loop. So that's posted on there too. And it walks you step by step. I like that it has these really big pictures where it really simplifies everything for you. Um, I also have a quick one on rounding. Some people get stuck on the rounding for some reason. So that's there. Um, solving equations. We are going to have equations. So I put that on there too. It's just like the very basic introduction to solving an equation. We're not going to get into like the huge amounts of algebra that you're going to cover. It's just a quick little introduction to it. And then we're doing graphing. So there's that, including uh, the line of a graph, the slope of a graph. And then mean, we're going to be taking a lot of averages in science. 
Um, so usually you have to do at least three trials and then you have to average those numbers from that trial to get one number to see if there's um, any kind of deviances in your data. So to do an average, it's the same thing as a mean. Mean and average are the same thing. So I posted this section on here um, to remind you of how to do it because a lot of people forget over the summer or you don't use it all the time. So it's there for you. So that is now a resource for you under general resources, extra math help. You can go and look at that as you want. If you wanna use it for your math classes, that's there too. Um, but I primarily posted that to help you in the areas that I have noticed as a teacher over the six years that I've been teaching that students seem to have a little bit of difficulty with or don't feel completely comfortable um, doing. So that's that. And I will be adding to it as the year progresses. All right, so today we're starting our digital notebook. Normally in class, I would require you the first week of school to go to the store and buy a notebook, a notebook that looks like this, a composition book. Some of you might be familiar with interactive notebooks. You may have used them before in other classes, maybe in your science class, maybe in some other class where you're doing things in the notebook and the teacher checks it. This is what we do in in-person learning. However, because of distance learning, it's too difficult for you to use this and turn it in because I check it every 10 pages. That's every two weeks. We do a page a day um, for grades and then you have to keep it organized and then I print out stuff and you cut it and paste it in here. That's not an option for us right now. So what I had to do is I had to create a digital notebook. So I'm going to introduce that digital notebook to you today. Now it's my first time doing a digital notebook. I've never had to do one before. So please be patient. We're gonna learn together on how to use it, what works, what doesn't work. I may be making modifications to it as the class progresses. So just please know that this is the first time I have had to do a digital one. I'm used to the physical ones. I like the physical notebook because you get to cut and paste and do all these cool foldables and stuff. So we're gonna start that today. And then we're gonna cover length and we're gonna to try to cover mass. I didn't get to mass first period, so we'll see how it goes this period. Um, the way that it's gonna run is I'm going to either record lecture ahead of time and post that for you to watch while you fill out your notes, or we're gonna do it in class like we're doing right now, live, where I'm gonna go over the topic, I'm gonna to cover it, we're gonna do some examples together, and then you're gonna go and practice on your own in your notebook. So those are the two ways, either I'm gonna pre-record it and then you go work and then I'm just here to answer questions and clarify anything that you're um, not understanding or it's gonna be a live lecture where I go over the content with you live and we practice at the same time. Do remember that I am posting these on the YouTube channel. I am however currently five days behind. Today's day nine and I think day four is the last one I posted. I am in the process of editing and getting them uploaded. Just give me a couple days to get that updated. I am falling behind right now with distance learning. So I feel you if you're in the same boat as I am. So we're gonna cover that. And I'm gonna introduce a notebook, how you're gonna use it, what it looks like. You do have to decorate some of the pages. I'm gonna cover all that in a second and you are turning it in. So each different um, chapter or big section will have its own notebook. So after I'm done talking to about length and we've practiced and maybe mass, um, I'll share this in Google Classroom so you can pull it up you're going to receive your own copy. You don't have to make a copy or anything like that. I'm gonna just give you your own copy. So we're doing chapter two right now, which is metric measurements. Chapter one was lab safety. This is now metric measurements. So I put a space here for your name. When you get your copy, you're gonna change this to your name and put period four. I already did the table of contents. Normally um, you would be in charge of filling this out as we do the pages but because this is a pre-made one and I already made it ahead of time for you, I went ahead and did the table of contents for you. So you'll notice there's page numbers and you're like, what the heck, how are there page numbers? Well, when you look at the slide, let me zoom in, in the bottom right corner, there is a number. So each of the slides is now numbered. So that corresponds to the page number that it is. You'll also notice on this side, it says graded no or yes. Yes means you are filling it out and it will be graded. If it says no, that means I'm not grading it. For instance, this table of contents, since you're not filling it out, I'm not grading it. Before in person, you were in charge of it, so I would be grading the table of contents for accuracy and everything. But since I filled it in, there's no point in grading it. And then like the next page is just a cover page. I'm not gonna grade that, obviously. There's nothing to grade. So I put a little key here for you for the ones that are being graded. 
And this notebook for this chapter has 20 pages in it. So the section one, there's two sections in this note in this chapter. Section one is metric measurements. And I put the learning goal for you there. That's what you need to be able to do by the time you're done with the section. So SWABAT, remember means students will be able to measure various objects using length, volume, mass, and density. So those are the four things we're covering for measurements, length, volume, mass, and density. And then here we get into the actual note pages. So this is for length. And it'll basically have, each page will basically have the same format unless we learn that something works better or doesn't work, then I'll omit it for the next one and I'll change it for the next chapter. But for right now, this is a structure that I came up with. So it has the title and the directions. We're gonna do the definition, what is length, the basics. I put a key here for you, important information that's already filled in. Then you'll practice. And then the next one is mass. Again, definition, important information, practice. Triple beam balance. This is what you use to measure mass. Most of you have probably touched a scale already. Um, it's just not feasible right now for me to like send a science scale home with you. Um, and if we're in class, obviously you would be able to use the scale. So on this one, you have to give me directions. So you're gonna define it, but then instead of having information that I gave you, there's gonna be directions. So like, what are the steps to measuring something on a triple beam balance? And then of course, practice, which is just this one picture. And then the next one will be volume. Again, important information, definition, information, practice, measuring volume, definition, steps, practice. I had to split into two pages, density, definition, um, important information, practice. So you see the basic, um, structure. Right now you might be like, oh my gosh, she's going really fast. I have no idea what this means. I am just showing you what it looks like. This is just for you to see the structure and what the notebook looks like. Don't freak out if you're like, I don't know any of this. I don't know what's going on. I'm literally just showing you a preview of what it looks like. And then here is section two. Again, with two learning goals, we're going to do conversions. This is where the math is really going to start getting into play and so on and so forth. What I want to point out is at the very end, you have a chapter summary. So every single chapter is going to have a culminating summary where you're going to go back and look at what you learned um, and dump your information there. So remember, this should just be review. You should all um, have covered, hopefully, the metric system in your younger years in elementary school, if not definitely in, high, in uh, middle school, in junior high. You should have covered the metric system. Meters, liters, grams, things like that. If you're like, I don't remember any of it, it's okay. As we go through it, it should start coming back to you and you should start catching on fairly quickly. It's no problem. We have three examples, the three basic units for the metric system. So we have English, which is called the imperial system, which is what we are used to. That's what we use in the United States, miles, inches, yards. But in the metric system, those things are kilometers, meters, and centimeters. So on here, it's showing you the scale because those units don't transfer over. They're not one to one. They're not the exact same size. So as you can see here, a mile is longer than a kilometer. Where the black line stops, that's where one kilometer is. So that means this red is what is short. Metric conversion, unit conversion factor. Here you can see this is a meter stick and this is yardstick. They're not the same thing. Some people think they're the same thing. They are not. A yardstick is the English imperial the measurements, which is 36 inches, 36 inches is three feet. That's a yard. So think like when people are sewing, they get yards of fabric or um, football, right? The yard lines, a meter stick, a meter stick is exactly one meter. They're not the same. You can see that one is longer than the other. And it gives you the conversion factor here. One yard is just under one meter. And then over here, you have a ruler. Everybody's seen a ruler. I dropped some off to some of you. This side is centimeters, this side is inches. You can clearly see that one centimeter is definitely not the same thing as one inch. They don't line up. It's more. You have 2.54 centimeters and one inch. Because if you looked closely enough, if I zoomed in for you, it's the one is not exactly on the five. It's between the five and the six line. So these are called conversion factors. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up some um, examples and you guys are going to type in chat your answers. So for A, we're going to start with A. Which one is longer? One mile or one kilometer? Go ahead and type it in chat and then I'm going to randomly pick on somebody. Okay, so most of you put the right answer. It's one mile. You can see that one mile is longer. It stops here, but one kilometer stops right here. It stops short, almost at half of a mile. 
So one mile is clearly longer than one kilometer. So now let's do number two or B, sorry, letter B. Which one is longer, one yard or one meter? Okay, and if you didn't see the visual picture, you also have it down here. If the yard was longer, then this number would be bigger. But one yard is just under one meter. So one meter is bigger. Okay, and then the final one, you're going to use this ruler picture right here. Which one is larger or longer? One inch or one centimeter? Go ahead and tell me. One inch or one centimeter? Which one is longer? One inch is definitely longer. When you look here, the one inch line is here. The one centimeter line is here. So that one is definitely longer. So make sure you're paying attention to the picture and the scale. And down here, it also tells you for every one inch, there's 2.54 centimeters. So that means 2.54 fit inside of one inch, which means the inch is bigger. All right. Thank you. So the basic unit of length, anytime we're measuring length, it's going to be the meter. But then, of course, that's just the basic unit. The meter is also split into other things using what's called a prefix. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Kilo means thousand. So it is literally thousand meters, 1,000 meters. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. One meter equals 100 centimeters. Centi means 100. Think century, 100 years. So centi means 100 meters, 100 centimeters and one meter. Because remember, we're getting smaller. Centimeters are smaller than a meter, and millimeters are smaller than a meter. So one meter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. Milli means 1,000. Millennium means 1,000 years. Millipede, centipede, anything that has milli in it will most likely mean 1,000. So 1,000 millimeters and one meter. So this is your quick little cheat sheet right now. And then just a quick note, make sure you use a lowercase m, which I think most of you have been doing, so there's no issue. But when you do a capital M, it means comp something completely different in science. So make sure when you're talking about meter, you use a lowercase m. And then I also gave you the abbreviations here for the other ones. So we're going to do a little bit more practice here. Which is larger for A, 1 meter or 105 centimeters? Don't forget you have these conversion factors here. So you said there's 100 centimeters and 1 meter. So if you put 100 right here, 100 is less than 105 centimeters. So that means 105 centimeters is longer. So be careful with your answer, guys. That's why this is here. It tells you one meter is 100 centimeters. 100 is less than 105. So the correct answer is 105 centimeters. Okay, so B, which one is longer? So which one is larger, 4 kilometers or 4,400 meters? Go ahead and put your answer down there. Yes, 4,400 meters is larger. Why is it larger? Because four kilometers is only 4,000 meters. There is one kilometer in 1,000 meters. So that means four times 1,000 is 4,000. You are correct. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to do C. C is going to require a little bit of math and maybe a little bit of thinking. Maybe. Some people caught it quicker than I thought. And again, you have your conversions here. Go ahead and tell me which one you think is bigger, 12 centimeters or 102 millimeters. I remember the millimeters on the ruler are the little, little itty bitty lines between the centimeter numbers. Each one of those is one millimeter. Nobody knows. I think you all are forgetting that like you can open another tab and Google it because I don't expect you to remember everything, but you should know how to look up information. There are 10. So if you look at my screen, if you navigate it away, when we count the lines, there's one, two, three, four, five is the middle one six, seven, eight, nine, and then remember the next line still counts, 10. So there are 10 millimeters and one centimeter. So why is that important? Because 10 times 12, so 10 millimeters times 12 centimeters gives you 120. 120 is bigger than 102. So you put 12 centimeters, you got it. And finally, the last one, so tell me which one you think is larger, 1,200 millimeters or one meter? And remember, you have a key here. Use the key. So 1,200 is bigger than 1,000. So 1,200 is the correct answer. Thank you. Okay, here we have a little bit of extra practice. Um, like you guys just told me, there are 10 millimeters and one centimeter. So using this blue line here, what is the length of the line in centimeters? So when you look here, you start with the big numbers first. So we know that the line goes past one, it goes past two, but does not go past three. So we know two is going to be our first number. And then when you count the little lines, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have 2.8 centimeters. Okay, so here's the next question. How many millimeters is the line? If it's 2.8 centimeters, how many millimeters is it? Yes, it's 28. You could either count out the lines, which takes forever, or you can just multiply 2.8 by 10, and that gives you 28. Perfect. Here's your next question. What is the length of the line to the nearest centimeter? So I want you to round it. If I'm asking you to round it to the nearest centimeter, that's the bigger number. What is the length if you're rounding it? How many centimeters long is it? You are correct. It would be three. And you can see it visually. It's closer to three than it is to two. So remember, if it's 0.5 and above, you round to the higher number. If it's 0.4 and below, you round to the lower number, which would have been two. But this one's 2.8, so we go up to three. Perfect. You guys are doing awesome. We made it through our first um, measurement lecture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share the um, notebook into Google Classroom. So let me show you what I'm doing so you can follow along and find it. And then I want you to open it up in another tab. Because so I'm going to show you how to fill it out. Just give it a second to post. Okay. So go and open that. And then I'm also going to post today's slides because you're also going to need today's slides. And it's going to go under week four because today is week four, day nine. Today is nine two. So it fits in that week bracket. And this is what you should see. Go ahead and change where it says your name goes here. Go ahead and type in your name and put period four for me, please. This is now your notebook, your interactive notebook for chapter two. It's here. And if you want to zoom in, like if it's really far away and you're like, what? I don't like that. Um, on the toolbar where it says zoom, you'll see a little magnifying glass with a plus sign. You click on it and you can make it go closer. So if you go to 100%, it'll zoom it in. You can go all the way to 200%. You can even go higher than that if you want. If you do 50% or fit, fit means it fits it to the screen size. So remember that that's where zoom is if you want to change the zoom. You are going to decorate this cover page. Um, if you forgot how to do that, at the top on the menu, it says insert, it's say file, edit, view, insert. You'll go to insert, image, search the web, and it'll bring up a new menu and you can search for images that you wanna add on there. I do appreciate you guys sticking with me the whole time. I know today has been a long lecture with me talking a lot. I won't normally talk this much. It's only when I have to introduce new things and really show you step-by-step step how to do them that I'm gonna be talking this much, but normally I won't be. Again, there's your table of contents. It just tells you all the pages and all the content we're going to cover. You have your cover page with your goal. And then we have our first page of the notebook that you're going to fill out, which was what we covered today, which is length. Um, the directions are going to be at the top. It says complete the following page using information from class discussion. Add at least two photos of length anywhere on this page to decorate it. Most of the pages are asking you to add photos on there to decorate it. Do not skip that step. Make sure you read the directions. For the first part for definition, you're going to type in your answers. When it's a question, obviously you're going to answer the question. When it's like this, a sentence, you're finishing the sentence. So like the base unit of length in the metric system is the, and then you would finish the sentence. It is represented by the lowercase letters and then finish the sentence. So when you see a colon like this, you're just filling in the sentence. When it's a question, you're answering the question. And you'll just type it right next to it. I give you the pertinent information, which is the um, conversion factors, and then you're going to have more practice here. So you're going to go through and you're going to highlight or add a circle over your answer and then go through and add your answers here. I already posted in Google Classroom the slides for today that I have the presentation on for the length. So like when you open up today's presentation, you can click on length and it'll take you to the um, slides that I use to go over length with you together. And you can have those open um, while you're filling in the notebook to help you fill it out because I literally pulled the notes right off of that um, presentation. Okay, so this down here, this last part is a picture that I took off of the slides. So in order to type your answer, you have to insert a text box over it. If you do not know how to insert a text box, I will show you right now. So this is an image. If you want to put your answer, you have to put text box. Up here on the menu, there's this T with the box around it. When you click on it, you can draw a text box in the area and then put your answer. And then you'll do it again for the next one. You can type your answer and so on. The length page for the notebook, I know in the slides I have linked length and mass, but wait until next time we meet to cover mass. Only do the length. Make sure you decorate the first page. 
Make sure you work on any missing assignments that you have and get those to me ASAP because I am working down the list of grading assignments. Um, if you need help, I'm available for the next 20 minutes until 1150. I'll be in the live. Um, you can either leave and come back or you can stay in case you have questions. I can help you with anything that we have covered thus far. But otherwise, you are good to go to lunch and I will see you on Friday.